welcome back to my channel, sports fans. Okay, let's get into this one right here. LeBron James played against better or greater defensive teams than Michael Jordan in the postseason? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can tell you, man, you could you could just base your videos off of what these dudes post in these uh Facebook groups. You you could just take this stuff and just make video after video after video after video and just demolish it and destroy it. Oh, oh my goodness. I don't even know where to start. You know, these Facebook groups, right? I was once in there, right? And when I first came in those groups, this was years ago, I was like, man, they dissing Michael Jordan? Why, why, they, why they dissing Michael Jordan like this? And this was really before, no, uh, it was probably about when the gold debate stuff started. You got to remember when this stuff all started, right? Dissing past players, going hard at Michael Jordan, his competition. You know, the, all these guys were plumbers back then. Nobody was good until 2010, right, in the NBA. When LeBron won his first championship, that's when everybody started getting good. The NBA was just trash before then, right? So all this started after LeBron lost in 2018, right? In 2018, he came out of it and he was three and six. Three and a six, three and six with I would say three finals meltdown losses. Let's don't forget about 2015, where he shot under 40%. Um, I think he had 3.5 turnovers, shot like 60-something percent from the line, shot 20-something percent from the three. It was crazy. So, yeah, he he averaged like 35, uh, 8 and 8, some crazy stuff like that. But it, look what it took him to get those shots. You could do that. You can do that. <laughs> Shoot, and we're not talking about this guy was like killing it from the mid-range. Yes, he took a lot of threes, but he bricked a lot of threes. Remember, if he can't charge the lane, he's not going to shoot that mid-range. He's going to shoot the three, right? Because the three is you you don't have to have as much touch on the three as you do with the mid-range. That's why he got away, away with it, right? So, so that's three meltdowns in the finals, 2007, 2011, 2015, right? This is when this all happened in 2018. They had to explain how they could keep going forward and promoting this dude. All this losing, all this super team building, all this. How do we go forward to keep promoting this stuff? Oh, Jordan played against plumbers. All the guys in, in before 2010, they couldn't play. They were plumbers. Um, well, we, especially they say before the 2000s for some reason. <laughs> Um, I guess Kobe, Shaq, Magic, Isaiah, Kareem, Karl Malone, all these guys were no good, right? But they all keep talking about them because they don't have nothing to stand on for their greatness, right? Remember, I always told you, when you want to rate, rank your GOAT debate or, you know, your top five, your top ten, it's not about talking about somebody's era as far as, oh, Jordan couldn't play in the, 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 the 2010s. He don't shoot the three. He couldn't shoot in the, play in the 2020s. He can't shoot the three. All these guys in, in, in the 1980s, they all couldn't sit around a three-point line, four of them on offense, and shoot these threes. It's not about that. Oh, you you you, you didn't beat Bird, right, when you was young. You, this is what these guys do because they don't have nothing to stand on as far as their king, right? So I, I always told you, what did you do in your era or your prime to put you top five or put you top 10, whatever like that, right? So when you look at LeBron's prime, it's basically the two tens melting down, choking, getting blown out in finals, team hopping. And then we go to the other side of resume, right? Four championships, four finals MVPs, four MVPs, and two scoring titles. So that's that's the greatness of his era, right? It's not that great. It's not that great, especially when you're getting outscored many a times in series. You have to have all these other teams, number one franchise players, to win from other teams that was your competitors. I don't see who was doing that in the 90s. I don't see who was doing that in the 80s. Yeah, these guys had loaded teams, and they got draft picks, and maybe they got one free agent, right? But the majority of these guys, like Bird that came to Celtics, uh, Kevin McHale was drafted. Danny Ainge was drafted. Um, who else? Dave Cowens, he was already on that team. And Tony Archibald was already. A lot of them guys was on that team. 
or on her last leg, or they got a free agent that was already on their last legs. Um, their last leg. Yes, they were Hall of Famers, but they were on their last leg. They only give you like six, eight points, just a presence, you know what I'm saying, with experience. Um, same thing with the Lakers. It was the same thing. Most of these guys, Cooper, Worthy, Magic, Kareem was already there. Um, most of those guys was already there when Magic got drafted. And yes, they might have got like a free agent Hall of Famer, but dude was far out of his prime, right? He was just there to give you an experienced peace of mind, right? They weren't going around getting other teams. Right. So it would be like, okay, Magic went and got Isaiah Thomas. No, went and got Kareem. And it's not Kareem, Hakeem. Went and got Hakeem. I'm trying to think of the West players. Or Clyde Drexler in his prime. Well, you can say Magic. You can say Magic went and got Clyde Drexler in his prime. That stuff was really considered weak back then. Especially other teams' number one franchise players. So this is what this guy did his entire career. And we're talking about the defensive teams that he played. So let's check this out. What, are we really talking about defense in the, in, the, in the 2000s, in the 210s? So in 2004, he missed the playoffs. LeBron James. This is the same guy in the LeBron era guys that got squashed in the Olympics by uh, Ginobili in his plumbers, right? Scola, a couple NBA players on there. They weren't, you know what I'm saying? At the time, they were bench players. Something like that. They weren't nothing big. There weren't no Melanated Brothers on there. The athletic. The athletic people. Where's the athletic players? <laughs> oh, goodness. So, look, the Ways, the Bosch, the LeBrons, all these guys on that Olympic team got squashed. And remember, I don't care about no age. I don't care about no year. LeBron was the biggest hype Coming into the NBA. Let me give it to you again. So when they say hype, he was more hyped than Will Chamberlain, which is incredible to me. Ne nobody. Nobody ever mentions Will Chamberlain. Nobody does it. When you talk about the biggest hype. No, I don't even think nobody was more hyped than Will Chamberlain coming into the NBA. This guy had to go play with the Globetrotter, uh, Globetrotters for one season because his age. He, was, he wasn't eligible. Right? Because he won't go to college. To me, he was the most hyped coming into the NBA. He was. And there will never, ever be a player that hyped, right? I'm talking about as far as skill set and ready-to-go players that could put you up all these points as a positional player. LeBron got his hype off the media, right? LeBron, LeBron he was playing against uh, Academy High School kids and dunking on nobody and doing layups on nobody. So more hype than Kareem. My dog drinking this water. More hype than Kareem. More hype than Jordan. More hype than uh, Hakeem, Magic, Bird, all these guys. So this is what we expect. If you're more hyped than them, right? You are more hyped than these guys because that's a lot, man. I'm trying. We just come up out of the '90s, you know, and before that, the '80s, and what have you? We saw what these guys did. We seen what these guys did and what they accomplished. We seen it, whether it was you know their overall career or when they first came into the league and took off like that. So we expect you to come in the league and do what they did, duplicate what they did, or do more. Your first rookie season. Because remember, the league got weaker. The, the Kobe had to sit on the bench. By 2003, the league got weaker, right? And that's why LeBron was able to come in and start, right? And shoot 41% from the field <laughs> in average 20 points. So we expected him to do 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 what Magic did first, his first year. Jordan, Barkley, all these guys. What did he do? No all-star, no playoffs. Not exactly what they did. And you didn't even have to make the playoffs. But can you at least be an all-star? If you're not an all-star, can you at least make the playoffs? Can you at least shoot something towards 45% from the field as a guy shooting all his shots under the damn rim? <laughs> so the second season, he misses the playoffs again. Not exactly the start for the most hyped player of all time. Not exactly a good start. So, if I'm not mistaken, 2005 offseason, they changed the rules. No more um, arm guarding, which was basically hand checking, right? They took the hand checking out in the late 80s, but dudes were still arm barring, right? Could put, can't do no elbows in the post, nothing like that. Larry Hughes comes over. So, suddenly, LeBron 
is making the playoffs now. Suddenly, he makes the playoffs, right? We talked about this. Yes, uh, no, we didn't talk about this. I was gonna make a video on this, but Larry Hughes came over making more money than LeBron James. Um, I don't know if LeBron was still on his rookie contract, but the, the defensive-minded Larry Hughes, they had to give him like 12, it was 12, 13 million a year just to come play with LeBron. That was back then. That's a lot of money back then. Larry Hughes, not even an all-star. So Larry Hughes comes over to Cleveland. 2004, no, 2005, 2006 season. And now LeBron makes the playoffs. And of course, like I said, the defensive rules, no more 90 defensive rules. Now he hits the ground running and he's making the playoffs. Right? So from then on, what defense was LeBron playing to this day? And it's only got weaker and softer, right? Because, listen, even though they changed those defensive rules, you had a lot of guys still there from the 90s, right? So these guys still gave the effort. They still gave the effort to play defense, right? They were still up on you. Couldn't hand check and do that no more. But, but you know, they, they would do it here and there. Say, let me see, let me see if I can get away with it. You know what I'm saying? But eventually they just stopped. Because you can't be getting called for a foul in crucial moments and stuff like that. You just got to change the way you play. But like I said, they still gave the effort in the 2000s after they changed those rules for LeBron. So let's just think. If they never changed the defensive rules that were in the 90s, and they never changed them in the 2000s or 2005, LeBron might not even make the playoffs his, until maybe 2007, 8, 9. Who knows? This guy might not make the playoffs. He might not have this Hall of Fame career that he has now. Might just be an average player. If he can't just barrel down the lane, he just might be an average player. So let's look at this. I don't, like I said, I don't know how when this was made. It goes to 2018. Like I said, anything past that really becomes more of a joke, right? In the 2020s, it's even more of a joke, right? So this only goes to 2018 for LeBron. So let's see it. Um... Number one, defense is faced in the postseason. <laughs> that Michael Jordan and LeBron faced. Michael Jordan, only four. Only four. Think about that real quick. All the times Mike been to the postseason, what was it, 13? I think 13 times, right? So 86 Celtics, 93. Um, 93 Knicks. 96 Sonics, but he put number two on there, right? So they weren't the number one. In 97 Heat. Wow. Okay. Pretty good teams. What is this guy leaving off? Michael Jordan was the number one defensive team all these years. That's why. It's not a lot of them. Not a lot of them. Plus, LeBron has been to the playoffs a million times. We'll talk about that in a minute. So, for LeBron, 2008 Celtics, old as dirt. We'll talk about that. 09 Magic? Let, let, let's keep going. Let me talk about it. 2011 Bulls. 2012. <laughs> Help me. 2012 Celtics. Let's keep going. 2013 Pacers, 2014 Pacers, 2015 Warriors, 2018 Celtics. Listen, folks, before we even go down this list, I told you before LeBron traded off defense for offense. He needed shooters because he can't, he can't shoot. So he had to go out and get shooters instead of defensive guys. Michael Jordan went out and got defensive guys. Look at the 97, the 98 Bulls running on fumes. They couldn't really kill you offensively. Him and Pippen. It was more defensively. These guys didn't give the effort. They gave overly effort, if that's a word. More than that, these guys were suffocating dudes. You can't even get a good shot off. That's what I tell you guys. This little three-point gig that y'all got going on, how are you going to get these shots off when a dude is in your mug the whole damn time? I don't understand because nobody is going to fall for that little bullish that they play every single game. Watch the NBA. It's a guy, four guys sitting at the three-point line, and one guy has the ball. 
the guy that has the ball, either he's going to shoot the three or he's going to start driving inside because there's nobody there, right? Except maybe the, the center. So that guy starts driving to the basket. For some odd, dumb reason, another three-point defender comes off his guy and starts cutting off the uh, guy that's driving. So now you've got two defenders on the guy that's driving. So he's like, man, am I going to keep driving or am I going to kick it out? So he kicks it out the homeboy over there. Now, another on the three-point line, now, guess what? The three, the guy with the ball, ball at the three-point line, he says, am I going to shoot this or am I going to pass it to the other three-point, my other three-point uh, teammate because here comes another three-point defender coming for me. <laughs> so he, he he passes the ball to his teammate because there's another three-point defender coming at him. And it just goes on and on. It's the same play every single game, the same damn offense on both sides. So what's going to happen? Uh, in the 90s, the 80s, whatever. You can't fool them. They're not going to come off their guy. The guy that's driving to the basket, nobody is going to come help with that guy driving to the basket. So he just stuck driving to the basket against his defender. That's it. And you're not going to do nothing. There is no help. These guys were great defenders back then. And nobody's going to let you chuck up threes. It's nonsense. How are you going to chuck them up when you're not open? This whole thing will get shut down. That's why I said, if you don't play this style of offense, the, the league will put you out of the league, right? The NBA will put you out of the league. It's a fixed league. It's not a real NBA league. I keep trying to tell you guys. Um, it's fixed so LeBron can keep playing. These guys aren't hustling all game. They're all standing around. Um... Let's say the 13 Pacers, 14 Pacers, 15 Warriors, and 18 Celtics? So I'm, I'm confused because I thought the Warriors, are you trying to tell me the Warriors in 2017 weren't the number one defense? Number one defense faced in postseason. That's what it says. You, you really can't believe a lot of these things that they say. But let's say this is true. Let's go to this right here. 2008 Celtics. These dudes are old. Old. Older than the Bulls, right? That won the championship in 98 as far as years in the league, right? Kevin Garnett came in in 95. Ray Allen, 96. Um, What was it? Uh, Paul Pierce, 2008. I mean, 1998. I'm sorry. So just Paul Pierce alone was damn near 10 years into his career. <laughs> You don't forget about the bad for Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett. These guys are old. You let these old dudes get the number one defense over you? Let's go to the Magic in 2009. You're trying to tell me you let the Magic. Who on that team is great defensively except for Howard? Jameer, Jameer Nielsen? Nelson, whatever his name. Who are the great? Rashard Lewis? This guy is a perimeter. Sh Who was locking people down on a match? <laughs> he don't turk a loop. Stop it, man. I give Dwight Howard his, his flowers. He should be a top 75. What are these people thinking? He's got more, more statistical accolades than LeBron by a long shot. 2012 Celtics? We just talked about the 2008 Celtics. <laughs> now Paul Pierce is like in his 12th season. And Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett are just old. They're in a wheelchair. You let these guys get the, num the number one defense in the league over the Miami Heat team? Wow! The Pacers. You're trying to tell me your super team again in 2013, right? They didn't have a better defense than the Pacers? <laughs> Who's on that team? Paul George? Good defender. Great defender. But stop, guys. I ain't trying to diss them. I know they had a good, couple good. But these aren't all-time great. No, it ain't one team on here. Yes, if that Celtics team would have came together when they was younger, yes, I would say all-time great defensive team. Right? But they don't compare to the 86 Celtics, the 93 Knicks, the, the Sonics, the 96, the 97 Heat. What about, again, the 14 Pacers had a better defense than your super team? The Pacers. that you just, All these teams, he just blew out. 
once he got to 2011, he blew these great defensive teams out, right? Um, 2015 Warriors. Well, well I, I give you your flowers on that one. They were great in that um era. They ain't going to be no great defensive team in the, in the 80s and 90s. You, you forget about it. With Draymond Green anchoring that team? <laughs> Draymond Green in the 90s and the 80s is too small to be a center or a power forward. Or a power forward. And he's pushing it as a small forward. He ain't got the grit like that. He's got the grit on skinny three-point shooters in this era. The 18 Celtics. Really? How can these be great defensive teams when there's no defense? All they can show you is these net ratings. That's it. They can't show you the hustle. They can't show you, you know, all these great defensive players of the years on those teams. Nothing. They can't show you any the, the great centers on those teams, the great power forwards. Get out of here. Get out of here. It's a fraud. LeBron has never really played any great defensive teams in the playoffs. Tell me some all-time great defensive teams in the playoffs. I might give you the 2008 Celtics, but that's in this era. Not taking nothing away from Garnett and, you know, Rondo. But that's in this era. Kevin Garnett wasn't sniffing nothing in the 90s or in the early 2000s until he had to build a super team. Paul Pierce is not, is not a good defender. Ray Allen is not a good defender. So who are we leaning back on? Rondo? I guess Tony Allen, was he even on that team when they won the championship? The 2012 Celtics? Old as dirt. I mean, <laughs> if they were the number one defensive team in the East, it just exposes. That would be like Michael Jordan with Washington. Having the number one defense in the damn East. Really? <laughs> uh, uh, Y'all gotta stop, man. This ain't even funny no more. And I said, just imagine if these guys, they already saw it. The NBA already saw what they had to do. They said, man, these guys got smoked by plumbers in the uh, 2004 Olympics. Damn, LeBron missing the damn playoffs his first two seasons. Damn. They just got smoked by FIBA. Plumbers. Grease. In the 2006 FIBA, they got smoked. What are we going to do? We got to keep this defense non-exist. These guys aren't that good. I told you guys before, for you to have, for you to have defensive effort all damn game, is going to affect you on the offensive end too. It's going to affect you big time. LeBron James would have stopped driving inside. I I'm not even sure in the 90s. Probably, probably never would have, unless some some issue was open, right? But what I'm saying is, he would not have been driving obsessively like that in the '90s because those big men inside, they're just as big as him, just as tall as him. I saw Anthony Mason. What what was this? Ninety eight? I want to say ninety eight second round playoffs. Anthony Mason. And you saw how big uh, Robin was. Pretty big in ninety eight. Anthony Mason just turned around and grabbed this dude by the neck and pushed him. And I'm talking about, it wasn't no flop. But I'm just saying, Dennis Rodman just flopped all the way back his head. He grabbed him by his neck and pushed his whole damn neck back and pushed him back at the same time. Anthony Mason. These are the type of dudes you, you, you messing with. They didn't play around. They see you barreling to the damn basket with a straight off. <laughs> I never seen that before in the 80s and the 90s. I never LeBron done did that his entire damn career. Or hit somebody in the damn mug with an elbow. Oh my god. I mean, these dudes would literally be fighting this guy. It's 
So he, he would know he couldn't even do it. He would be reduced to be, if you couldn't shoot or have some footwork to either get to the paint or do some footwork in the paint or shoot on some perimeter, that's all you got. Yes, you could drive to the basket. Many guys don't drive to the basket. But what I'm trying to say is you're not going to be driving to the basket with stiff arms and elbows in people's face, chest, and stuff like this like you've been getting away on these getting away with it on these soft three-point shooters and they say nothing these dudes are so whack and soft they just take the abuse and don't say nothing to the dude ain't nobody waiting for no ref back in back in those days like bro i'm gonna give you no more chances to do this if you ever put a stiff arm on me in my damn face my neck my chest my stomach or these elbows in the same places i'm gonna beat your i'm gonna beat your that's what's gonna happen Yes, I seen dudes go up in the 80s and 90s, whatever. And when they went up, they kind of like, you know, arm guarded or maybe threw an arm out. That's an offensive foul. But not every time. And they damn sure didn't do a straight arm and throwing elbows while they're going down the lane. Basketball, we only knew like arm guarded. Like you're always arm guarded, you know. You say you're driven with your, your left hand, you arm guard with your right hand, but the arm guard is more, you know, to, to your side. It's like def, defending the, def, um, using using that so the defender don't come past your arm. But the arm is, you know, to your body. So you guys tell me what you think, man. This guy is, <clears throat> dude, I can make videos all day what these dudes put up and they get debunked. And then, like I said, you debunk these dudes for a whole year. The next year, a whole bunch of dummies will come saying the same thing. Like, it didn't get debunked. Like LeBron's career is just starting or he's in the middle of his career trying to prove he's still this great player and he's going to be in the GOAT debate. All this stuff. His career is over. He failed. It didn't happen. I mean, somebody need to tell the LeBron fans it didn't happen. He had a chance to even cheat. <laughs> if it had a chance to cheat, it couldn't even come through. That's bad. That's bad. When you cheat, we, we ain't even debating that this guy cheated, and now it's top five. Like I told somebody, I said, man, with LeBron, you don't even have to make up nothing in his career. Everything is right there. He ain't got to make up nothing. He failed.